Welcome to the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a tectonic time bomb poised to reshape the destiny of cities like Seattle and Vancouver at any second. Today, we'll plunge into this story of hidden forces, unsettling science, and a future shrouded. In doubt, seeking an answer to one pressing question, are we prepared for the day the big one finally stirs? To comprehend what's at risk, we must look to the core of this threat, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. It's not just some random fissure in the Earth's crust. It's a subduction zone, a battleground where two colossal tectonic plates clash in a slow, unyielding dance. On one side lies the Juan de Fuca Plate, a chunk of the Pacific Ocean's seabed. On the other stands the North American Plate, upholding the continent where bustling cities thrive. The Juan de Fuca is being thrust downward sliding beneath the continental plate at a pace so subtle it's nearly undetectable. Roughly four centimeters per year. But don't let that sluggishness deceive you. Over centuries, this tension mounts, like a coiled spring being compressed to its breaking point. When that spring releases, the outcome will be a megathrust earthquake, an event so vast it could reach magnitude 9.0 or beyond on the Richter scale. We're talking about a quake that could make the Earth shudder for minutes on end, trailed by a tsunami that could obliterate the coast in mere moments. This fault stretches over 1,000 kilometers, from Vancouver Island in Canada, down to Northern California in the United States. It's an unseen scar beneath the ocean surface, but its impact when it ruptures will be impossible to ignore. Scientists know this because it's happened before. The last great Cascadia earthquake struck on January 26, 1700, more than 300 years ago. How do we know the precise date? The answer emerges from a gripping blend of science and history. Across the Pacific in Japan, records from that era recount an orphan tsunami that swamped coastal villages with no local quake to explain it. Years later, geologists connected the dots. That tsunami raced across the ocean sparked by a massive rupture along the Cascadia Fault. Meanwhile, in North America, tales from indigenous peoples of the region speak of a night when the ground quaked and the waters surged, erasing whole communities. These narratives, passed down through generations, resonate with what modern science now verifies. Cascadia isn't a mere possibility. It's already flexed its might. Now consider what this means for the present day. Geologists estimate that the Cascadia subduction zone unleashes a megathrust quake every 200 to 500 years. Do the math, we're already within the time frame for the next major event. The clues are there, tucked away in layers of soil and tracked by a network of seismographs and GPS stations. These advanced instruments monitor the plates every shift, registering each millimeter of strain as it accumulates. What they reveal is alarming. Across much of the fault, the plates are locked tight, jammed against one another, unable to glide smoothly. All that pent-up energy is poised to erupt. Paleoseismic studies, which probe ancient sediments and traces of past tsunamis, reveal that over the last 10,000 years, at least 19 colossal events have jolted this region. It's a distinct pattern, a relentless cycle that spares no one. The uh, next earthquake isn't a question of if, but when, and when it arrives, the shaking won't be the only devastation. The real horror will rise from the sea. When the Cascadia Fault snaps, the ocean floor will heave upward in a sudden violent thrust, displacing an enormous volume of water. That energy will birth towering waves, some soaring up to 30 meters high as they strike the shore. Picture it, a wall of water as tall as a 10-story building, barreling forward at breakneck speed. Cities like Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver will have just 15 to 30 minutes to react before the tsunami swallows everything in its path. It's a mercilessly brief window, especially in places where bridges might buckle, roads could clog, and panic could spiral out of control. To grasp the gravity of this, let's revisit a real disaster. The Tohoku earthquake in Japan in 2011. Magnitude 9.0, the same caliber of force Cascadia could unleash. That day, over 15,000 lives were lost. Whole cities vanished from the map, and the world watched. 
stunned as water inundated streets and fields. Now, transpose that scene to the American West Coast. In Seattle, skyscrapers would teeter and collapse, tunnels would cave in, and the port, crucial for trade, would be engulfed. In Vancouver, entire neighborhoods near the waterfront would disappear beneath the waves, while escape routes would grind to a halt in gridlock. Computer simulations don't sugarcoat it. The destruction could surpass Tohoku's, with damages climbing into the hundreds of billions of dollars and a human cost too. Immense to fully tally, close your eyes for a moment and picture yourself on an Oregon beach. The sky glows a vivid blue, seagulls swoop low overhead, and the rhythm of the waves lulls you into a trance. Suddenly a faint tremor vibrates through the sand beneath your feet. You glance around, bewildered, as the shaking swells into a roar that seems to erupt from the Earth's depths. Trees bend, utility poles topple, and the blare of alarm slices through the air. Then, silence creeps back in. But it's a, a false calm. Far off, the sea retreats as if drawn back by an invisible hand, exposing the ocean floor strewn with seaweed and thrashing fish. It's a warning, a raw cry from nature that few heed in time. Minutes later, the horizon blackens. A ribbon of water appears, swelling fast, unyielding. The wave surges in, a liquid beast that devours the beach, the homes, the roads, reducing all to a sea of debris. This is the fate the Cascadia subduction zone promises. Faced with such a bleak tomorrow, it's only natural to ask, what can we do? Science can't pinpoint the exact day the fault will give way, but it arms us with Tools to get ready. Local governments and emergency crews are devising evacuation strategies, reinforcing buildings and bridges, and educating people on what to do when the earth quakes. Yet the duty doesn't fall on them alone. Each of us, dwelling in this threat's shadow must prepare. A survival kit packed with water, food, and medicine. A plan to reconnect with family, knowledge of the highest, safest paths, these modest actions could spell the difference between survival and tragedy. The Cascadia subduction zone is more than a geological oddity. It's a vivid reminder that the Earth, for all its splendor, doesn't compromise with our vulnerability. It dares us to be resilient, to wield our knowledge, to shield what we hold dear. When the big one hits, it won't seek approval, but we can decide today how we'll confront it. The West Coast's future dangles by a thread, a fragile boundary between the hush of waiting and the thunder of disaster. The question that lingers is simple yet urgent. Are we listening to the warnings the Earth whispers to us? Or will we wait until it's far too late?